This is the new MetaQuest 3S. <laughs> High quality mixed reality for $299. <laughs> Hell yeah. I've been waiting for this one for a long time. Um, you know, when, when we built Quest 3, we delivered the first high quality mainstream mixed reality experience where you can see the world around you, you can reach out and touch digital things as if they're right there. Um, Quest 3 is the best mixed reality device that you can buy today, and, and I am really proud of it. But we don't just innovate to advance the state of the art. We also build technology and innovate to bring the future to everyone. And we've been working on bringing the Quest 3 family to a lot more people. Quest 3S has the same defining features as Quest 3, high resolution, color, mixed reality, powered by the same processor, vivid pass-through, hand tracking, feels natural, touch plus controllers for precision. You get the full range of experiences from Horizon OS, gaming, social, fitness, watching videos, productivity, and more. You know, we optimized the whole system a lot. Uh, we, we swapped out the pancake lenses for Fresnels. And with all of that, let's talk about AI. All right, so there is a lot of exciting stuff going on in AI. And we've got a lot of updates to talk about today. Um, AI agents, creative tools, Llama, how this all intersects with our work on glasses and building future computing platforms. One of the simplest cases for AI use cases is your AI assistant, right? That, that basically you can use to answer any question and create content. And Meta AI uh, differentiates itself in this category by not just offering state-of-the-art AI models, but also unlimited access to those models for free, integrated easily into our different products and apps. So Meta AI is on track to being the most used AI assistant in the world by the end of this year. In fact, it's probably already there, right? We're almost at 500 million monthly actives and we haven't even launched in some of the bigger countries yet, so, so we're getting there. And today, we are making Meta AI even smarter uh, with our new open source Llama 3.2 models. And I'm gonna get into more details about Llama 3.2 in just a minute, but one of the headlines is that uh, they're multimodal. Um, so now Meta AI can natively understand images as well as text. Now, we're using this new capability to build some features that, that I, I haven't seen anyone else build. I mean, this is, this is you know, so much that for a little while we were struggling to keep up with the demand, um, but I think, I think we're on top of that now. Cross my fingers. Um, you know, glasses are, are a very natural computing platform, right? They, they're great for taking photos and videos. Um, you don't have to pull out your phone. Um, you can live stream from them now. You can do video calls where you can stream what you're looking at. You know, I, I personally love the audio, right? Listening to music or um, audio books or um, taking phone calls. We got the open ear speakers, so you know, you're not, you know, what's going on around you isn't obscured from you. But one of the most important things about this is they're also just good looking glasses, right? Because the reality is that most of the time you're not using smart functionality, yet at least. So, um, so you know, people want to have something on their face that they're proud of and that looks good and that, 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 that's um, you know, designed in a really nice way. So they're great glasses. We keep updating the software and building out the ecosystem and they keep on getting smarter and capable of more things. Uh, so for example, you know, pretty soon you, you're gonna be able to uh, control Spotify and Amazon Music with voice alone. We are also adding new app integrations from Audible and iHeartRadio so that you can easily access more and more content from the glasses. But the most important and, and awesome part of the whole thing is the AI. All right, so glasses, are, they're kind of the perfect form factor. All right, here we go. There you go. This, this is Orion, our first fully functioning prototype. And if I do say so, the most advanced glasses the world has ever seen. Now, about a decade ago, I uh, you know, started putting together a team of the best people in the world to
to, uh, to build these glasses. And the, the requirements are actually pretty simple. But the technical challenges to make them are insane. Um, you know, they, they need to be glasses, you know, not a headset, no wires, less than 100 grams. Uh, they need wide field of view, holographic displays, sharp enough to pick up details, <laughs> bright enough to see in different lighting conditions, large enough to display a cinema screen or multiple monitors for working wherever you go, whether you're, you're in a coffee shop or on a plane or wherever you are. And you need to be able to see through them. And people need to be able to see that through them too and make eye contact with you. Right? This isn't pass through. This is the physical world that really inspired us and showed us what was possible with VR. But of course, the limitations of being tethered to a computer were pretty obvious. So the second era was about getting it all working in a standalone platform. And this is what Quest has been all about, uh, building out something that can scale to millions and tens of millions of devices that can find a place in people's lives. And I think we've entered the third era of mixed reality uh, with Quest 3, getting really good high resolution mixed reality with enough compute to take advantage of it was really the missing piece that makes this system so much more approachable to so many more people. And with the Quest 3S, we expect another huge influx of people joining the ecosystem. So with the way that MR has landed, we now have this stable hardware architecture to build on. To be clear, there's still plenty of innovation to come, but things like face tracking and eye tracking, or better displays or better form factor, they don't fundamentally alter the core platform. And that means that we can expect stability for generations to come. And that stability means software side can improve at a much faster rate. And we can invest much more in infrastructure, trusting that those investments will stand the test of time and that those gains will start to compound. Welcome to Horizon OS. We're building the first ever platform that truly combines 2D apps and the immersive 3D experiences that you can only get in a headset. And not just one mode at a time, but together, with 2D apps running inside virtual and mixed reality worlds. That's the traditional running inside the new. Imagine whipping out your Instagram app to take pics during your boss fight in Asgard's Wrath. Or pin a TV full of your favorite media apps to the wall in either your virtual Metaverse Horizon home, or a wall in your home office. Now, it's never been done. But in this, the third era of our platform, we're doing it. Because this Metaverse, it's better with apps. So let's get into the big news. First, Horizon OS, it's now open for mobile-style development. We know that developing of traditional immersive game engines, it's so powerful. But we have to admit it's a little bit esoteric. And you have to create so much for every app. You're building environments, you're building physics, you're building every button your characters are going to push, and more, more. And fundamentally, there's just not that many people in the world who know how to do it. So today I'm pleased to announce that if you can build for Android, you can build for Meta Horizon OS. In your favorite language, your favorite IDE. And to get all of you just in there, we have completed the open store transition we started in April. <laughs> App Lab is done. Everything is migrated, and starting today, our open store, it fully welcomes 2D and spatial apps. So get your submissions ready. At long last, we have finally cured curation. Every app, 2D, 3D, it's all in one store, discoverable. And to help you build these amazing new apps, we're launching a whole new way to build spatial experiences for Meta Horizon OS. That's the Meta Spatial SDK. It lets you take your normal mobile app, 
and just break out of flatland, get out of the rectangle. You can add native spatial features like floating interactive 3D objects, take... All right, I'm very excited to talk to you today about Llama 3.2. This is our most developer-focused release yet. In the past, Llama 1, Llama 2, Llama 3, and 3.1, we've been very focused on model performance, getting to the most intelligent state-of-the-art models, opening them to consumers, and opening them to you. But for this release, we've been burning down the list of what we've heard from all of you you need to make your tools better and to take the industry to the next level. Before we do that, I want to talk for a minute about why open source matters so much to us, going back to the beginning. So I started at the company back in 2005. I was our 13th engineer. Uh, and Boz, who's sitting right next to me here in this photo, started just a few months afterwards. So at this point, we were 20 engineers supporting 5 million very active college students. And this was in the doldrums of the internet. So the web had boomed and busted, so there was 